Hello, welcome to TFLP Microcasters. I am joined tonight by Anna and Christian. Good Hello. evening. And uh, we were going to have a special guest, but uh, there, there were, you know, things happened, so I uh, couldn't make it tonight. So, um, so yeah. Um, They're just the stuck with us. Yeah. Yeah, and that's, oh, that's Lucas. Okay. Oh, and this is Lucas, yep. Um, so it's a, uh, it's a special day here in Cyberverse land, um, because Anna has finally finished her McAdam. Yay! It's McAdam. He's very small. Is he? Like, how is he compared to, like, a deluxe? Why don't I show you? Look how prepared you were. Wow. That is how small so he is. He's, so he's deluxe size. <laughs> <laughs> yes, deluxe size. Hey, here's a here's an older deluxe just to kind of see. Wow. Let's make him look a little smaller. Do that. What a weird one to pull out of. <laughs> you know, my desk is the place of <laughs> the place Magic of surprises. Right. <laughs> so Anna, are you the only person on the cast that actually finished McAdam? Like I think I think Paul did, right? But then I think he's selling them for Yeah, I think you know. he got rid of his, as far as I know. Um I'm I'm not sure. I have this like memory that Nick finished it, but I actually don't know that he did. Um, so Did he actually I, I wonder if he actually one. assembled it. Yeah. I might be the only one, but we should save him, save the best for last, as they say, and talk about the old puppy first. Yeah, I got uh, this your puppy. Thunder Hall isn't like fully in frame there, Anna. You might want to like no. move that up a little bit. I have to. I have to hold on. Bam! You can. Oh, I know what you could do. I've got double dealer. <laughs> you just stand on double dealer. <laughs> That's, Perfect. That's one way to do it, for sure. One way. One way to do it. Mine is cute. Uh, yeah. Why don't you start? Yeah, well, this is Thunderhell. I have him in alt mode right now, which I'm imagining... Christian, have you transformed yours? Yes, I have. Okay, I just didn't know, because you had it in robot mode right now, so I wasn't sure if you transformed him or not. Yep, he went back. So he's... um. This is his badger mode. I mean, wolf. Um, he is a wolf, supposed to be. I think he looks a lot like a badger. Uh, it's just me. He can wolf put his, Yeah, he can put his magical burst of energy into his mouth to look like he's spitting it out. Or you can just leave his mouth open. It looks like he has a ton, which is kind of funny, if you ask me. He's a like, kind of oddly shaped little wolf guy. He's very hunchy. He has spikes on his back and a spike tail that doesn't move. And, you know, his, his arms and legs are his literal robot mode arms and legs, so they're very articulated. They move quite a bit. You can do a lot with them if you want to. But they're um, also one limitation of that is that his um, front legs, his front feet are just his robot mode hands facing forward with the claws kind of like that so you know he's kind of a he's probably the most complex quadruped deluxe toy i've ever played with because he is rather complex to transform compared to most quadrupeds because most of the time you just kind of have them lay down on all fours and they're done this guy you actually kind of have to unfold his entire body to get him to transform, it's a little bit difficult. I mean, not like really difficult, but cyberverse difficult. That's what we'll call it. Cyberverse difficult. Does he have wrist <laughs> articulation there, Anna? Wrist he swivel? does. Yes, he has his on, front front foot swivel and back yeah, foot they're swivel. On balls, so you can put them any which way you need to. And interestingly, he has the ball joint set to go back like this. So it can tip backwards, not for transformation, but to hold a shield right. So it's interesting that they actually did that. 
Because in order to hold a shield, you have to tip his wrist in like that, like Kirsten's showing. Oh, this is a good question from Randall. Would What would you say is the worst of the deluxe Cyberverse figures? <laughs> uh, possibly this one. Wow. Christian, what do you think of the ones that you've handled? The ones I have, I have Bumblebee, RC, and this one, Thunderhowl. The worst one I think out of those three would be RC. Oh, wow. Okay. And I'll tell you why. Backpack? <laughs> My? He does look like a badger now that you've mentioned it, and uh, I really like, like that. So I don't mind you mentioned being that you have to kind of unfold his. I don't mind him being a badger either. I like badgers, but you mentioned that you kind of have to unfold his entire body to transform him, and he's kind of the most complicated the Cyberverse delight or most complicated quadruped you've ever had. It doesn't feel like the most co complicated quadruped I've ever had. In fact, it reminds me of some of, that I had in my childhood from Beast Wars, like this. Feels like a Beast Warsy figure. It does. You, you know, you add in the the cute blank face like he has, and the, the shield accessory kind of gives me like a, a canine or a wolfang feel. And I like that. I like that about him. He's blue. He looks kind of like a knight. He's got a cool sword with a cool energy effect. One of the energy effects that I actually like. You guys know I don't like them very much, but this one is neat. I think, I think it's interesting that like Ron, Ron in the chat says that uh, his least favorite is Hot Rod uh, because he broke pulling him out of the package. Well, yeah, I think it's interesting that three of, us, <laughs> three of us all picked a different worst figure out of the set. So that tells you something. It's, it seems like all of the figures are relatively consistent, you know? Like, I, yeah. I don't know if there's, like, one where you're like, oh, man, like, this one is absolutely the one to get versus, you know, one that's like, oh, this one's the stinker of the line kind of thing. It seems. Well, it's funny, because I honestly, I would say the one to get might be Hot Rod, honestly. <laughs> really like him. The way I normally collect, I'd say the one to get would be Thunderhowl because he's a new character. Right. He's unique. That That's the way he's I usually unique. collect, too. And if you're, you know, if you grew up on Beast Wars like me, then you're going to like him. Or if you just like Beast Wars like me, you might like him, too. Hey, Christian, you're, like, mm -hmm. freezing up, just FYI. Oh. Yeah, and I right honestly, now. I do like him. I do not like how he feels in my hands. Mm -hmm. But that was like all of Cyberverse for me. Yeah, you know, the plastic quality doesn't really bother me for most of the figures, but this guy, he does not feel good to me. I, I don't yeah, know, it Christian, feels very I, similar to the Warriors. Yeah. Um, I was going to say that he kind of reminds me of the Robots in Disguise cartoon from a few years ago. Yeah. Um, like, I really kind of actually like that, where they had the Monster of the Week kind of guy, and we had, like, what, what's the, the lobster one? Fisk. Fisk. Or Fisk. Yeah. And, um, yeah, like, we just had a bunch of different ones like that. We had the one that turned into, like, a tractor. Yeah. It was fun stuff. Yeah. There was some fun stuff in that series. I really think there was. I'm going to be struggling with him for a bit <laughs> to try not to break him. Yeah, he's a bit weird. The uh, the joints that control transformation for his beast mode head on mine were very tight, and it felt like I was going to break him the whole time, but I didn't. Yeah. Yeah, it that was a bad spot, weird. and the back's a bad spot that feels very fragile. Um. Because I would say, like, his transformation is neat. I actually really like it. Because you do have to, like, bend him in half. And you have to, like, unfold him. And it's just cool. He's fun to play with. But yeah, it's, he's it's not fun to play with because he's scary. Right. And the transformation is different than anything we've seen lately. Yeah, for sure. And it presents sure. a unique challenge just from that aspect. But uh, in the end, I kind of think he's just a normal run-of-the-mill Cyberverse Deluxe. Like, if you have... 
one of them, you kind of have a feel for what you're going to get here. This one's definitely the most interesting of the ones that I've had. But I wouldn't necessarily necessarily say he's the best of the ones I've had. Yeah, I mean, now that I think about it, obviously Grimlock's the best. I don't know what I was thinking. He's a really good toy. I like B. B's good, too. He is good. So, I mean, this line has been pretty good. Like, I'm I'm pretty happy with it now that it's, you know, more or less done. And the only reason I don't like this guy is because I feel like if I keep playing with him, is I tend to play with my um, animal style characters because I can give them, you know, I can make him have his animal head in robot mode and make him run around as kind of a werewolf thing. And that's fun to me. But... I'm afraid that if I keep messy with them as much as I want to, I'll probably end up breaking them eventually. Just because the plastic is frail. It is, it's thin, and it every piece of it feels like it could break pretty easy. It's a bummer. Yeah, it's, it's just not as robust as the normal stuff I collect. Yeah. He's, ve- he's very light. It feels like he's half air. <laughs> yes, very much so. Why don't you pull out your... Uh... Uh, Titans return weird wolf and you can uh, mess with him too and, and see which one breaks first. Right? They'll compete. Yeah, luckily I get rid of mine. Knock on wood, mine's still not broken, but perhaps I'll be able to replace it with one that definitely won't break in a couple months. Hopefully. I don't know. Do you think that they're actually like making them from different plastic? Yes, I think they're probably aware of that issue, so they'll change it. Because I don't think, did the LG one have that problem? I don't remember. Yeah, it did. I think it was like it every, did. all of them had that the same problem. I don't know. I haven't messed with mine in, you know, whatever, a couple of years. So I'm not even, I'm not even sure. I didn't have the problem at the time and I have not went back to mess with it since ever. Right. Had. Seems yep, like a lot of people here. have had that problem. Mine didn't break and I sold mine. There you go. Yeah. Well, so Hall has some really cool design cues. I mean, and I, I think he's supposed to be a knight, right? So he kind of looks like he a knight. Is. So he, in the um, in the cartoon, for those of you who haven't watched Cyberverse, he is a character that does show up. They find him encased in the Crystal City. He is an ancient Cybertronian who's been trapped there for a long time. And he is very, like, you know, by-the-book medieval knight acting character. He uses fancy speech and talks about honor and chivalry and blah 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 Is he Silverbolt? I was hopeful because I knew his personality. I was hopeful he would sound like Silverbolt to me, but he doesn't really sound like Silverbolt. The I, there's definitely personality cues, being that Silverbolt is another Wolfie. That they they definitely share some characteristics. My favorite Silverbolt is an eagle. Thank you very much. <coughs> Just kidding. Well, well. Horrible toy. <laughs> Same thing. So yeah, this is, you know, now I have him just like Christians. He's in his night mode. I will say, like, as far as Cyberverse figures go, he definitely has probably the most paint Mm -hmm. of any of them in all the right places. So he doesn't really feel like he's off color until you actually look at his cartoon model and realize that he's off color in a lot of places. Oh no. Is he good? Is he that green of his other toy that came out? He looks a lot like the Ultra. Like, the Ultra oh, looks no. just like his cartoon model. This one is a little different. But it's okay, because he still looks good. Like, this is a good-looking figure. You know, that's not his default face. This is his battle mode face. He has a man face under it as well that he can turn on. Instead of the kind of covered face. But, um, Yeah. I think he he captures the look pretty well. It's just not perfect. <laughs> like, he definitely has more toy. of a cape in the cartoon, where it's really just his tells. Kind of tell split down the middle in this version. But I, I really do like that he has the silver paint. He has the red accents on his um, hip pads. The red on the inside of his shield. You know, he's got color to him that a lot of the other Cyberverse toys really lack. Like, I was just kind of wondering, you know, what will I do to him to put a little paint on him to make him look better on my shelf like I did my hot rod? 
<clears throat> and the answer is probably nowhere because I would have to do so much to really make him look more like the show model that I think he's fine how he is. Um, the only point of articulation he's kind of lacking on is a little bit of the ankle articulation. Like this is technically ankle tilt, technically. <laughs> it's very limited. It's on a ball joint, so they move a little. But it doesn't let him pose as dynamically as a lot of the more recent stuff with really good ankle tilt does. Yeah, and he's missing the waist swivel, of course, too. Just by nature <laughs> That's true. Of That's true. I was thinking about that. But to me, he looks like a cool robot, and he looks like a cool badger wolf thing. That's what drew me to him, because I, I do not watch the show, and I probably won't ever. But uh, he looks neat, so I grabbed him. Yeah, he is nice looking. He's He's got the look very good of a, a good looking figure. And if you don't really, you know, care about him as a character... He's worth getting for the reason just how he looks. I just, I honestly don't recommend it for people like me who really mess with their figures. Like, I think that, you know, most of the Cyberverse stuff I felt like is good for people like me who mess with their figures. I don't feel like transforming them will break them. But this one, I feel like if I keep transforming him, I will eventually snap him. Well, it's kind of disappointing, too, because Cyberverse, I think the main demographic is children. Yeah, um, and so even though these ones are a little more expensive and all that, like it's still one you might pick up for your kids, and so it's kind of like I don't know. I I don't. I would rather have a brick for my kids, you know, than uh, something that could break. That's the thing. Like I only own one of the ultras, and I think Christian owns a different ultra because you have um. Uh, Rack and Ruin, right? Oh, yeah. I do have Rack and Ruin. I thought so, yeah. And I have, um, what's her name? Not Lugnut. Not Lugnut. That, that became her name, unfortunately. Clobber. Clobber. Thank you. Mm. <laughs> yes, his transformation cog will wear out from being transformed many times. <laughs> It'll just explode. <laughs> just kind of different. Um... Yeah, so I was going to say, like, my experience with an Ultra figure, like, one of the more recent ones, has been that it's great. Like, for a kid, that would be excellent. Yeah. It's, they're very brickish. It's solid, like it's said. brickish, it transforms easy, and it's a fun robot. Like, the the vehicle mode is stupid on Clover, but the, the robot mode is just fine. So I'd... I'd recommend that if you want something for the kids. And there is an ultra version of him. And I have heard that it's actually pretty good. I think people like it. Well, that's one thing. Yeah. That's, I don't know. I find it, it's a little disappointing. Like, there are some neat characters in the line uh, that draw me into it. I just don't really want it. You know, I it just doesn't really fit into my collection. And then my kids just don't really care. So yeah. I'd rather buy something else. So. I don't force Transformers down their throats. Yeah, and Cyberverse is fun, and it has a lot of good characters and a lot of cool designs. So, you know, if you if you like these things, I'd recommend checking them out. I don't know if I'd really recommend this one so much if you were just going to get one of these. You know, if you don't care about having 15 Grimlocks, Grimlocks the, I would say, the best toy out of them. Because this transformation is similarly complex and foldy, but... Mine is very um, sturdy. I've transformed him a bunch, and he's just fine. <coughs> I, don't know. I thought the Megatron was kind of neat. I mean, the Optimus wasn't bad. He's good. I, mean, those, I think those and the Bumblebee were the only ones that I got. The I, I didn't think the Bumblebee was bad, and I liked it better. Like I got one of the Wave 1 Bumblebees, and that thing was just hot garbage um, and, and fell apart and whatnot. So like I, I actually think the Bumblebee is not bad. You know, either it's just one of those things where it's like my kids don't care, so I just never, I didn't finish the lineup. Yeah, I think that the um, the Optimus from this line, I forgot about him because he's just another Optimus that I have clogging up my shelf, but he's actually really good as well. Yeah. So the Optimus and the Grimlock were really good, and this one would be 
just as good if I wasn't scared of transforming him. Because I'm like Christian. I think having a badger is cool. Like, the fact that he doesn't look like a wolf is actually a plus for me. Because <laughs> a badger is fun. I love badgers. They're great. Yeah. A little angry badger man. It's enjoyable. He does look like a wolf in the cartoon, though. Oh, well. A lot I, more I like a wolf. I won't see a cartoon, the cartoon, so... There you go. Just be a badger to me. It's great. Oh, and... It's a win-win. So everyone can see... That is actually how a sword looks in the show, too. It's It has color, but it actually has the wolf face spewing up the sword. So I think that's cool that they actually gave him an accurate sword. Oh, and you put the laser effects on yours, right, Christian? So people get to yeah. see that. It actually, you know, cool. you guys know I don't like blast effects or effects pieces like this, but this one, I don't know. I like it. It's neat. It's good. It makes the sword cool. And he can use it in wolf mode to vomit. So that's cool, too. He can. Badger. Badger wolf. Badger. So, so, Christian, what do you think? Is it worth your money, or would you not get it again? So, it's the same thing I've said about every Cyberverse Deluxe so far, is that they're good, and I like them, but not a single one has felt like $20 to me. And, you know, maybe that's because I'm so jaded by having... Uh, War for Cybertron for so long now, but these feel about 15 bucks to me. Yeah. I don't, I don't know why it's like that $5 difference is so critical in my mind, but it is. Uh, like Anna said, though, this one may be a bit better in that department because it has so much paint where a lot of the other deluxes did not. And here's another more modern size comparison for us. Yeah. And Obviously, if you picked between the two because of the same price, Rotor Storm will win every single time. Yeah. Uh, the Copter Mold is pretty average as far as size for the Deluxes, so I thought he was a good comparison piece. And yeah, he's a really, really good Deluxe, whereas Thunder Hall is fine. So, Christian, yeah, can... I'm curious, when you yeah. uh, um, when Earthrise comes out, or not Earthrise, I'm sorry, Kingdom comes out, and the deluxe MSRP is twenty three dollars instead of twenty. Are you gonna sit there and go, "This feels like a twenty dollar figure, not a twenty three dollar figure"? Uh, we'll see, but so far all those guys look <laughs> really good. Yeah, that's and right. I'm willing to pay more for that extra quality. Right. It's just what it's I don't like is paying me. more for not that quality, which is what these are. Yeah, that I feel like. I feel less bothered by the fact that Hubcap here is twenty dollars than Thunderhell being twenty dollars. Thunderhell is bigger. He's equally complicated. He has just as much paint on him, but it's just something about the like quality and build of this thing does feel like a cheaper toy. Yep, yeah, I agree with that. That's a good way to put that. Because remember, none of us particularly were were huge fans of Hubcap. If you watched our show and that, he's not bad. He's just not very good. Hi. But uh, he definitely feels more worth it than Thunder Howl does. But yeah. Thunder Howl comes with a build a figure piece that builds he a does. certain figure that uh, we we're going to talk about, uh, you know, right? Yeah. Yeah. Let's talk about him. Let's get on it. Let me knock over a bunch of things that are on my desk and bring up this little guy. Well, he is little. He is not big. So let me get to boost him up a little bit. Let me get him a booster seat. There we go. He's got a booster seat now. So that is Big Adam. So he is in eight pieces across all eight of the deluxe figures. So it is not an easy figure to complete. He is a classic builder figure that requires you to get that whole set. The difference, the difference has been all the figures. Anna, you're roboting. I will stop talking. Stop talking. Stop talking. Stop talking. Stop talking. Stop talking. Am I back to normal? I think yes. you're back. You're good now. Okay, so the difference between him and all the Marvel Legends build of figures you're used to is that instead of being bigger or at least the same size as the other guys, he's actually smaller 
than the figures he's packed in with. So if you set him next to one of the deluxes, he's a little bit smaller than some of them. Um, the deluxes vary in size, so he's not super small compared to them, but he's not a big figure. That seems kind of crazy considering that, like, a Marvel Legends Build-A-Figure usually is, <coughs> is what, like, six pieces? Seven? Something like that? Is it six? It's five. Six. It's six. Yeah. So, the fact that he's eight pieces and still small, that's crazy. It was eight pieces, and the pieces, at least, that I have are hollow. Like, yeah. really badly hollow. Of uh, McAdam? Yeah. Yes. So here's the thing with McAdam. Like, he has the look pretty well. Like, this looks like the show design for McAdam. And he is, you know, a a cool background character that's interesting and impressive and has cool effects on the story and all that stuff. So he's cool. And if you like the show, you probably would like to have a version of him. But he is a thinner plastic than the deluxe is. You can see just from the coloration on most of them, this kind of greenish, grayish color that he is for most of his body is semi-translucent just from being kind of thin and hollow. Um, his head also ends up being semi-translucent from the way the plastic is made. And that's just the, that's the feel of him. You know, he feels light, he feels thin, he feels hollow. It's kind of a bummer because he doesn't look bad. He looks good, but he doesn't feel great. Um, he does not have ankle articulation, which I think is a really weird move considering, you know, all of his, all of his wave mates, all the deluxes have ankle articulation and he lacks it. So it's kind of a bummer. You know, it looks like you could probably move those ankles, except they're just molded pieces. He does have wrist level. And he is entirely made of ball joints. So that means that, you know, you can click them together. But that also means that he has the possibility of a figure made of all ball joints, which is both good and bad. You know, if you if you were resonating with Christians talking about Beast Wars earlier, you know exactly what a figure made of ball joints feels like. And he has all the pluses and minuses right now. He's very um, he's very sturdy. He stands up well. He poses well. But in a few years, maybe not. <laughs> You never know. And that's the thing that I feel like is a little disappointing because, like, for, you know, Marvel Legends, you know, good or bad, um, I feel like that usually their Build-A-Figures are really, really cool. And it's one of those things where I always feel like, you know, buying a whole wave of Marvel Legends, that there's always, like, a couple figures that you kind of regret getting. But you're like, darn it, at least I got these Build-A-Figures in it. And, or the pieces. Yes. And then, like, once you get that build figure it, it really feels like it's worth it like you know spending the extra money and so that's what the thing it's kind of disappointing with this and, and you know i kind of echo your thoughts you know where you know i bought the first few figures of the line i was like and i got this build a figure pieces and i'm like okay this is not great and that's where i was like yeah i'll just you know give you those pieces so you can complete it but it yeah, yeah it just did not seem that great because Lucas was the first one to get any of the Cyberverse figures, and he got three of them, and I ended up getting the other five. Um, four of the five I really wanted. You know, I really liked those. And then the Optimus I got just to finish it. Even though he's a good figure, I really did get him um, just for that reason. And I don't regret getting one for that reason, but I would really regret getting eight for that reason because he's not great. You know, I'm not going to get a different McAdam. There's not going to be another opportunity to have him on my shelf. But, you know, still, this isn't this isn't excellent by any means. It is okay. I think another part to, to take into account is, you know, when we compare to Marvel Legends, you can buy one wave and get your Build-A-Figure and you're done. This took three waves to make. And it's taken all all year to do. And that's... That's a long time to build up hype to something that is kind of meh. Yeah. yeah. And that's not saying I don't want Build-A-Figures to exist in Transformers. This is the only the second one we've ever had. And um, 
I want I want that to happen. Like a build a figure Autobot X would be great, or a build a figure, you know, Imrate Zaron, or you know, some some of those other randos like McAdam that don't transform and could you know benefit from being included. I want to see more of that, but I am I, I'm hoping that the team can take this one back to the drawing board and try something a little different. Yeah, me too. Yeah, I really do. Because this is, it's a cool idea. And, you know, one of my biggest problems with it actually is the size because, and not because he's just, you know, smaller than the other toys, so he feels less valuable, but McAdam is big in the cartoon. He doesn't scale with his friends. And he's a -a Build-A-Figure. I feel like Build-A-Figures are supposed to scale with their friends. Like, he should be bigger than the Bumblebee toy that he is equivalent to and you would have to get one of the little bumblebees for him to look right with them well and i think again the fact that you know the figure is pretty hollow and there's eight pieces there like come on man you couldn't make it a little bit bigger you know right yeah so he's, he's a bit of a bummer like i mean i don't regret having him i think he'll look cool on the shelf with the other guys because he is a you know a unique design for cyberverse I mean, I do think that, like, it, I do think McAdam will probably be worth a decent amount of money. Like, he'll probably retain his value just because, again, yeah, like, probably. It, was kind of a, it was a pain in the neck to actually complete, you know, the Build-A-Figure. And it's not like we're getting a McAdam every year. So I, I do think that, you know, for somebody, if they do want to complete them, it's, it's probably worth it. You could probably get your money back. But, um, yeah, it's just a little disappointing. Yeah, he's he's a little he's a little disappointing. James points out that you could call Combiner Wars a bunch of build a figures if you really wanted to. I don't want to. I think it's funny. Yeah, I mean, uh, it's a funny I, joke. I think I'm gonna say better luck next time <laughs> and hope that next time isn't in another 14 years. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I would be. I would still get a little excitement to hear that we're getting eight more Cyberverse figures and they're going to have another Build-A-Figure. I would get a little bit of excitement because I would hope that it was better. I would hope that it was something, you know, the quality of the other figures and that the quality entirely would go up. So I wouldn't mind it. Yeah, I mean, I think it's... see one in, like, Kingdom... I think, again, that it's one of those things where they definitely make all this plastic, you know, a little more flexible to, you know, withstand kids. Um, But then, of course, it sounds like, as our viewers have said, and, you know, as we have said, that people feel like they've either broken figures or almost broken them. So, you know, that's that's kind of disappointing. Yeah, and someone mentioned feeling like they were going to break him when you put him together. And I actually had the same experience. I, um, which part was it popping on that made me really uncomfortable? About half of them, honestly. The head made me pretty uncomfortable. That was not easy to get on without breaking it. And the um, arms didn't really want to pop together. because the arms come disassembled. They come in two pieces. So I had to pop them together. And they did not want to go together super well either. And this is the type of plastic where if you do put too much pressure on it, you will show the actual wear on it. He'll definitely get that discoloration when you wear the plastic. So you have to be careful with it. Now that he's together, he's never coming apart because it's not like he transforms or does anything. He's got a hole in his butt for a stand. I just realized that. That's cool. Great. That's nice, right? Yeah. Now he can fly in the sky. Yeah. Cool. And he does have his little hammer thingy. Axe, hammer, doohickey. So that's nice, I guess. I totally thought that was RC's when I got her, and I just gave it to her. It is RC's for you. Ron Ron was mentioning about, um, so Walmart is getting those shippers in with Wave 2 of Earthrise and then these Cyberverse Deluxes. And it, it, it seems a little odd that these are dropping, like, pretty much right before Netflix is supposed to drop, like, I'm assuming those Netflix, like I'm assuming that Netflix will come in a shipper, and that it should be dropping in like a few weeks, right? Presumably. 
Yeah, he's all hard plastic, Eric asked. Do do we think that the would the hair dryer technique work for assembly? Like with that. No idea. Out? I've never tried it, so I'm not familiar. What you do is you heat up the like plastic with a hair dryer. Yeah. So I mm don't -hmm. oh, no, I never tried it, so I wouldn't. Would. It might. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. He's fine, you know, like if you're if you're trying to find one on the secondary market, if you're trying to find someone who's selling him, definitely consider how much you're paying for him. Like I really wouldn't recommend going to Marvel Legends Build a Figure Prices as a guide for how much this thing should be worth. Because what you're gonna get is a sub deluxe figure that feels like cheap plastic that you would be really happy with for a ten dollar figure you bought at Big Lots. Or Dollar Tree oh. or wherever else. I know that was so harsh. That was that rough was to me, right? Okay. Gosh, sorry. <laughs> Just how I feel about it. Like, I like yeah. having it. You know, normally we come here with pretty positive opinions, and it's interesting that we can't really come away with a super positive <laughs> opinion this time. But, no. but it sounds like that for the most part, you've liked all of the Cyberverse Deluxe. Yeah, I do. Just I really like them. Here, so. You know. I, I knew I wasn't going to like the build a figure. I knew just as soon, like you said, when you bought that little set of them, and I think you handed me the chest at that point to check out, and I was like, ooh, this doesn't feel nice. Mm -hmm. You know, feels like right. bad plastic. Ooh. And that worried me. And, you know, it kind of, the prophecy fulfilled itself, as they right. would say. And I think, again, as we said, that they, you know, kind of threw these in just to get that price point up to 20 bucks. Which, I, I mean, I do think, you know, Christian, I know you're mentioning that you don't think that these feel like $20 figures. The, the weird thing is, is they do have a higher parts count and in, in more articulation. So, like, I don't know if they're, like, they're probably worth more than, you know, $15, uh, the whatever the Warrior Class ones that are coming out and, and whatnot. But it's still... I, I don't know. Like, the plastic just throws me off on the, the whole thing, so... Hey, if you want to say his parts sat at $5 each, then that would make him <laughs> a very expensive figure. That would make him a $40 figure? Yeah. I mean, it's probably about right, honestly. I bet if you tried to sell it on eBay, it's probably you'd probably get that. Yeah. Yeah, depending, if not more. That's why I said if you're if you're really after him, I'd just be careful how much you pay for him. He's just yeah. he's you're not gonna get him in and be like, ooh, this is a high quality figure. Right. And he he does, like Catherine said, he looks fine. He's just not, you know. He's like a stand in for your transformer that you would get from a cheaper line. He's not like what you would expect with the quality. He looks like McAdam though. I feel like that that's what's going to happen with those uh, the red figures when they come out, uh, which is another line that like initially I was kind of excited by, um, but then I've just seen reviews and it does not look good. Like I think that um, I'll probably get some of the later ones. Like the RC looks really good in some of those, but man, like I the first wave just seems not that great. If they did Action Masters in it, I would buy them. Or, again, Autobot X. If they did an X, I would buy him, too. Or I guess it. Without Spike inside, it's just an it. Yeah, and it's... Uh, body. Eric in the chat said that uh, one sold for $75, so... That, I, I do think that they actually get a me. decent amount. Yeah. And it might be yeah, true, like, Thunder... Me. the The... Uh, Thunderhawk just came out, so it might be some, you know, one thing where people are just completing them now, so there might not be as many options. But again, I, I don't think that there's going to be a lot of people selling it, and so I, I do think it's actually probably going to be worth a decent amount. I mean, honestly, as someone who likes Cyberverse, one of the characters that in the show I thought, ooh, I really wish I could get a toy of that was McAdam. So. It's like, I definitely wanted this, and I want to have it, and I want to keep it, but I'm not thrilled with it. Hey, somebody's out there looking for them in my area. I found a Thunderhowl at one of my local Walmarts the other day that was missing the McAdam head. 
Oh, oh no. Some of them stolen out of the box. Don't do that. Yeah, please don't do that. That's monstrous. Just, just spend one hundred and sixty dollars on deluxe figures. <laughs> <laughs> totally, I give professional life advice for a living. There you go. All right. Well, um, so I guess are are you saying it's uh, buy or don't buy this? McAdam, probably a don't buy, unless you just really need him, or you're, you know, really close to completing the deluxe set. For me, Thunder Howl is a maybe. Yeah, for me, Thunder Howl's a wait for a sale. Yeah. yeah, I think that's a good way to put it. A wait for a sale. He is not bad. He is not great. But he is, you know, nifty, and he looks cool. He just fills for all. That's the only thing wrong with them. Yep. Otherwise, he's super cool. McAdam. McAdam <laughs> fills for all, but actually isn't for all at all. <laughs> he's 30. Yeah, R Randall was saying, you know, just start chopping up red figures and put those in as build a figures, so like going forward, which. I, I, better than this. I, I wouldn't I, hate I'd that. I'd be game for that. Yeah, I think especially like if you if you make red figures of figures that it would hard, be hard to make a transformer, yeah. you know, like again, like the RC, I think is somewhat difficult to make a, a good transformer of that figure. Um, I, I, I think it's good for that, but I, I don't well, really need again. I'd say X. Yeah. Yeah. Or Autobot X. Because X, you could whatever. reuse parts from, you know, if they did a Prowl or a Trailbreaker or a Jazz, you know, they could reuse those arm and leg parts and then mm -hmm. just make a new chest and head. Yeah. There you go. So. So, you know, that's the kind of stuff that Marvel Legends does all the time. They reuse bits and pieces and only add you know, right. a couple new ones here and there, and it, it works for them really well. All right. Well, thanks to everyone that participated in the chat tonight. Uh, Ron, Randall, Jason, Eric, Catherine. Did I miss anyone? Wow, full house. Yeah, good to have you here. So, yeah. So, thanks, everyone. Um, and, uh, yeah. Uh, also, if you want to uh, check out uh, last night on TFYLP, we went over the third-party reveals from the uh, TFCon third-party panel. So, uh, if you want to check that out, um, that was a lot of fun. And uh, we, we are talking about bringing back uh, potentially Out to My Wallet, um, you know, here soon. So not this week, but hopefully hopefully soon here. And then uh, Cut the Tape is on uh, Fridays or Saturdays, depending on when Rick sends the video to me. So, uh, you know, so that check that out as well and then transformers book club uh that um this week we're reading more than meets the eye uh issues is it six to eight is that right anna i think it's six to eight yeah i actually skipped last week but i won't skip this week i'll be there i promise it was my birthday i mean that's how you should celebrate your birthday is talking transformers right i know i know and instead i ate cheesecake with my husband i mean Sorry. So. Um, there you go. Randall told you in the chat. More than meets the eye, six through eight. So there you go. So yeah, so check, uh, check that out. And if you want to continue the conversation, uh, join us on Discord. Um, the link should be on the YouTube videos and on uh, Twitter as well. So. Oh, yeah. So Anna would be four through eight. So. <laughs> Anyway. Who says I didn't do the readings? I didn't do the readings. <laughs> yeah. Luckily, it's a really easy comic to get through, though. So. It is. Anyway. All right. Well, thanks, everyone, and we'll see you next week. Bye. See y'all later.